We are in college football free agency. The, the, this is the definition of the closest thing you can get to to college football free agency as possible. Every day I'm looking on Instagram and Twitter and I'm seeing new players have gen, uh, entered the transfer portal. New players, and th these aren't even small names. We got Bo Nix, you got Zach Calzada, the one quarterback to beat Alabama this year. You got Keaton Slovis just joined recently. Spencer Rattler was one of the first guys. Jameer Gibbs, one of the most slept on running backs from Georgia Tech. Uh, you have Jadon Hazelwood, the number one wide receiver a couple years ago. You have Quinn Ewers, uh, a 1.000 recruit. The only guy that ever was had that high of a rating was Vince Young, and guess where he went? Texas. And this is not a Quinn Ewers video, but I'm, I'm, the, you have these prolific athletes, these five stars. There's so many other names I, I, I can't mention because I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to keep up. And this video is to really not look at the players I, I i'm going to look at those players I'm, i've already made a TikToks on them i might make a youtube video on some of the transfer players where they could go but right now on december 13th we are in a dead period for ncaa football recruiting if you don't know i like to fall recruiting you're obviously you have some interest if you clicked on this video um and what the dead period basically means is from here until roughly around january um players cannot have contact with coaches and coaches cannot have contact with these players so you won't see visits you won't see pictures of these new visits unless they happened over the weekend that's why these this recent weekend was so important for a lot of programs to have these last visits before early signing day which is tomorrow and i am so excited for early signing day there's so much news i'm gonna break down if you want like quick videos go follow my tiktok it's in my bio um but to analyze the transfer portal, I, I've seen a lot of people ask, well, why is this happening? Why is all these players all of a sudden just leaving? No, no, nobody has seen this many high profile players leave their respective programs and go into this portal. And the big change that it, for some younger fans may not know is for the longest time, if you did transfer, you had to wait an entire season to play and some people might see that as well it's just a year you just sit down you learn the playbook but a lot of these guys are like such as bo nicks he wouldn't be able to sit for a year he'd be like a six-year senior i don't even know if he could use his eligibility i think it did take a year off your eligibility as well i can't confirm that uh because it, it's hard to find all the rules for the last time but i think it did take a year off your eligibility and you had to wait so that's why committing and making these recruiting decisions were so important a couple years ago because if a player wanted to move out it was either nfl or he had to wait an entire year to go play football again for a respective school now that is gone and like the ncaa they make a lot of decisions that are uh that needed to change but they are 20 years behind and a lot of their decisions, such as NIL, do have repercussions. Every decision has a repercussion. Now, was it a good decision to let kids transfer freely? Yes, to let them have control of their own career. It's not their fault that they get on campus and all of a sudden their coach leaves. And now they have to waste a year of their eligibility just because their coach can move freely. That is that is the sense of why they made that rule change. And it is fair and I understand and it. I am not complaining because I love the chaos of college football right now. And it might be because it hasn't hurt my team as much and the team that I support and root for. So if it hasn't affected me, then I'm looking from the perspective of I haven't been hurt yet. But I still think it's cool that these players are able to move around and potentially change their careers because I love maximizing the talent that they have and they don't deserve to get screwed over by, say, say you committed to Lincoln Riley a year ago, he leaves. You can't transfer out without losing a year of your eligibility, a year that you could be a better player, a year that you could have a Joe Burrow like experience where you come back and you are one of the best players of college football. You have to wait an entire year and that might be beneficial for you. But at the same time, you don't get that opportunity with these previous roles. And the biggest question that people are having that are complaining about the transfer is what is next? What are the next steps to take? And honestly, after doing research, I don't know what the fix is. And I don't even know if there needs to be a fix. Because 
when it comes to the transfer portal you have a guy a lot of guys that are just leaving their programs because they're not getting playing time but what a lot of people fail to see is it, it could be a multitude of things i mean we're talking about these high profile i'm looking at five stars and four stars i understand there's a lot of three stars movement that could end up being really good players but at the same time we're going to focus on the top tier guys and why they are moving rower he's not going to get time he's not going to get time caleb williams is their quarterback and i'm sure he knew that before the season ended zach calzada that happened today a lot of people were confused on why he was leaving he believes he's a starting quarterback he has a cannon of an arm and he has a lot of mechanics that need to be fixed if he goes to the right coach texas a&m has connor wigman and they have haynes king those those are two quarterbacks only one quarterback can play on the field at a time and win a championship i'm looking at you georgia pick a damn quarterback anyways you got guys like dylan gabriel who just wants a change of scenery and believes that he could be a better quarterback elsewhere because UCF most likely has their quarterback set in. You have Bo Nix who wants to just play another year but knows that Auburn's going to move off of him. I mean, Jadon Hazelwood doesn't feel like he was being utilized in Oklahoma and let alone his coach left that recruited him. The, the, these relationships that these coaches build and they leave, these kids will follow. And you could say, well, they do have to wait a year. Then we're back in the same position that we were. They lose a year of eligibility. A kid shouldn't be penalized for things that most likely were out of his control. Now, sometimes it is because in their control, because they weren't mature enough. They didn't learn the playbook. They're they're entitled. They don't believe that they deserve the, the treatment that they've gotten. And that's the biggest problem with this is you're trying to make a rule for the majority when each specific transfer should be treated uniquely because it's a unique person it's a different it, these are all college football players but they're all in different situations there's there's not 32 teams there's not 32 player uh leagues like this is 120 college teams not even including division two not even including juco there's all these different players and there's not a governing body to control it all and i don't think there ever will because you have ad's these are these are schools these aren't just college football programs they are schools and they're entities of themselves so you're never going to have an answer for the transfer portal but i think the best way to go about it is let these kids move as freely as they can and it is more on the coaches to give those guys the opportunities and if they leave they leave and you don't see all these players going to Alabama. You don't see all these players going to Georgia or Ohio State. You see some. You see like Henry Toto uh, from Tennessee last year. He's a starting linebacker for Alabama right now. And he transferred. Sometimes it's just you have to look from the benefit of the kids. And now it also forces kids, uh, coaches to be accountable for their actions, which is the biggest thing. If you want to leave your program, you better face the repercussions of leaving that program. And... Players should be allowed to move freely if that coach leaves. Because if you're not going to have any rules in place, contract extensions right now in college football don't mean anything. Mel Tucker, if he fails in the next two years, he'll be gone. That's the truth of it. The, the, the money isn't a problem anymore for a lot of these universities. And uh, with these dead periods, it's very interesting to watch. Not from the side of seeing who will be uh transferring out because we know a lot of the, as this is just the beginning next year there's going to be a lot of players the year after it's going to be a yearly recurrence that you're going to see these big five-star names that didn't work out i i remember my only view of jadon hazelwood which i know he has done a lot of good things at oklahoma and he's had some great games but my one highlight that comes to mind is him kicking the ball out of bounds and it might just be because i haven't seen a lot of oklahoma games but it's, it, it, it's a good thing. We need to understand that this transfer portal is a good thing for these players. And it's not. it shouldn't be seen as a bad thing to give players a, an opportunity to change their careers. Because these are young men that are trying to build something for themselves to get a chance to go to the NFL. For many of these high-profile players. And it's the, the, another thing that's so interesting about this dead period... As we, as we arrive to early signing day and a lot of players are going to commit tomorrow. And I'm going to be on it as much as I can. Um, but, and I, you'll definitely get a video tomorrow breaking down all the moves that happened, everything that happened. Um, 
but or it's not tomorrow it's definitely wednesday i apologize if i kept saying tomorrow I, it feels like tuesday for me um but we we're gonna see uh, this weekend we even saw a lot of teams make moves specifically right before the uh the deadline there's a reason why quinn ewers committed when he did there's a reason why kelvin banks committed when he did there's a lot of reasons because for example we're going to use texas even though it's bad for my mental health to talk about texas they they want to make a move for denver harris they want to make a move for evan stewart what is the best way to get a recruit's attention and listen for a little bit without using a head coach you get his his buddies and you get all these players and every commit recently in the past 48 72 hours have been calculated for a reason to get other recruits to buy in and to let them sit there and think and think about the decision right before the signing period because i can't even imagine what it's like to be a recruit uh getting hit up by every coach in the country and you just have to sit there and you're not and it goes radio silent for two to three days and you have to sit there and the time is clicking and you have to make a decision and sometimes you overthink your decision and sometimes you think the decision that you made is not the right one and then all of a sudden in an instant you switch and you change your mind and you feel like that's the best for your career that's what's so that's the beauty of recruiting there's a reason why for this dead period and also they should not move early signing period to january they're thinking about doing that don't do that um this is why i love recruiting this is why i love following college football um this is just a quick breakdown of what's going on with the transfer portal what i think of it what's going on and i'm gonna try to get this video out as soon as possible early signing days wednesday look out for a lot of info and a lot of analyzing of all these recruits and then i could start building my way too early top 25 and that video is gonna age terribly and i can't wait to react to it if you like the video please like and subscribe thanks so much for watching uh leave a sub do whatever you feel have a great winter break man go kill it on finals if you're still taking finals